Welcome everyone to part 9 of my complete Blender beginner tutorial series. So in this part we're going to be modeling some low poly rocks and some low poly grass and then we're going to be using a particle system to put it on the ground here. So let's start off by modeling the rock. So I'm going to click with my middle mouse wheel and just move out of the camera view. So what I want to do is actually just hide everything and get it out of the way so that we have a clean space to work with the rocks. So there's a few ways to do this. One way that I'm just going to do this, which is really easy, is to just double tap A and select everything and then just press H and that will hide everything. And then if you press Alt H, that'll unhide everything. Okay, and then to center the 3D cursor into the center right there, I'll press Shift C. And now the 3D cursor is in the center of our view. So let's press Shift A now. And I'm going to add an icosphere. Now I am making low poly rocks. If you'd like to, you can make more realistic rocks, but I'm going to be making low poly rocks. And if you would like to make some more realistic looking rocks, I do have a Blender tutorial on how to make realistic looking rocks, and we actually use like realistic textures and stuff. So if you'd like to do that, I'll have a link in the description in a card right over there in the corner to that tutorial. But let's make these low poly rocks now. So I've just added an icosphere, and don't move the icosphere because if you move it, these settings will go away. You can see now it just has the move settings. So I'm just going to press Shift A, add an icosphere. Now on the icosphere settings, I can turn up the subdivision. So I'm just going to turn this up and I'm going to turn it up to maybe like five. And then let me just press Z, move back into solid view so we can see that a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm just going to make the shape of the rock and then we'll add a modifier onto the rock to make it low poly. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'll press one on the number pad to go to the vertex select. Let's just select a vertex right down here and I want to bring it up and kind of flatten the rock because rocks are usually flat kind of where they're going into the ground. So now I'll press the O key and that's going to turn on this proportional editing. You can also just click right here. So now I'll press G to grab and Z on the Z axis and I can just slowly bring this up and then this circle here, I did introduce you to the proportional editing in an earlier part, but basically when you scroll up with your mouse wheel, it's going to make this circle bigger and whatever in the circle, that's what's going to be pulled along with the vertice. So I'm just gonna bring it up like that and just flatten it out, something like that. Maybe just flatten this up too, that's pretty good. Okay, so now I just wanna make this rock a bit lumpy, so I'm just gonna grab random areas, press G, and just grab some different areas. Just make it lumpy and random, just like a rock. Now I don't want it to be that circular on the top here, so I'm just gonna go to the top. Just clicking to select areas and press G to grab, and then clicking once I move it. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna be adding three rocks, but you could add more if you want. So I'm going to select this rock, press Shift D, and that'll duplicate it, and then I'll click with my middle mouse wheel and just bring it over. Tab into edit mode, and then I'm just going to change this rock because I want it to be different. So I think I'll make this one maybe a longer, uh, flatter rock. The main thing is that it's different because we don't want all the rocks to be looking the same. We want them to be different and we will give them random rotation. So they will look a bit different and also we'll give them random scales in the particle system. Okay. So now that we have that, I'm going to select this one, press shift D, click with middle mouse wheel, bring it over. So we have another rock. I'll tab into edit mode, just select another one. And this one, maybe I'll make a little bit of a taller rock and just bring the sides in a little bit. And you can just keep doing this if you want. You can just keep adding more and more rocks. Uh, don't add too many, but if you want to, you could add more like five or ten or something. I'm just going to go with three because three will work fine for our scene. Okay, so now that we have all these selected, they're not really low poly. You can see because we have the shaded flat, you can see all the faces but we wanna make this more low poly. So to do that, I'm gonna click over here to the modifiers panel and I'm gonna click on add modifier and I'm going to add the decimate modifier. So what the decimate modifier does is when you turn this ratio down, it's gonna slowly get rid of more and more vertices, but it's going to try to keep the shape of the rocks. So this ratio, I can just bring this down and you can see it's trying to keep the shape of the rocks, but it's getting rid of more and more vertices. So now it has that really cool low poly look. You can see that now it has those little triangles and stuff and that looks really cool. That's what I want. Now, if you have a bunch of rocks, you're going to want to add this onto all the rocks, but to manually add this on could take a lot of time. So what you can do instead to add them all on at the same time is to just shift select all the rocks and then shift select this one last because this one has the modifier on it. Now what you can do is you can press control L and control L is the shortcut key for linking. I want to go down here and link all the modifiers so that all the modifiers are going to be linked to the other one. So click on modifiers and because we selected this one last, this modifier is going to be on all the others. So now if you want to change this a little bit, you can just select a rock 
and then change it and it won't change it for the other ones it'll be unique so just change that around and um, as i'm dragging this value if you want to make the movements more sensitive what you can do is hold down the shift key and drag around and that's going to make the movements a lot more sensitive so just make it to something that you like i think i'm going to make these a little bit more low poly okay and then i want to apply this so with my mouse hovered over the modifier just press Control a and that'll apply that but if you want to apply the modifiers to all the objects at one time what you can do is just select all the modifiers and then what i'll do is go object and we're going to click on convert to and then click on mesh and you can see now when i click on each one of these tab into edit mode you can see they're now actual vertices okay so that looks really good let's just add a basic material to this so i'll press z and move my mouse up to go into rendered view and then right over here i'll click on this and click on new now for this material, I just want it to be a little bit darker. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna call this material rocks. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then let's actually make the roughness a little bit down so it's a little bit more shiny. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Now again, it's pretty easy just to click and drag and drop the color onto the other rocks. But if you have a bunch of rocks and you wanna do this all at once, what you can do is just uh, hold down the shift key and select all the rocks. And then lastly, shift select one of the rocks that has the materials on it. And then press control L and you can link this time, instead of linking modifiers, we want to link materials. And now all of them will have that material. Okay, so there are the rocks. Now to put them all in the same particle system so that they're randomly generated, I need to put them into their own collection. So to do this, I'm going to shift select all the rocks. And then to put them in their own collection, what I'm gonna do is press M, and that is the shortcut key for move. And then I don't want it to be in this collection because that's what it's already in. What I wanna do is click on new collection, and I'm gonna call this collection rocks. So just type in rocks, and then you can click on okay. Now, if you drag down the outliner right here and then minimize this collection, you can see if I minimize this, the, here is the rocks collection. So now I can just press Alt H and that'll unhide everything. And then if I uncheck this and check this, you can see the rocks are being hidden and then they're coming back. So I'm just gonna hide them for now. And then what I wanna do again is just press A to select everything and press H to hide it just to get them out of the way so that we can make the grass. Okay, so to make the grass, I'm gonna press Shift A and actually let me just bring this down okay shift a and i'm going to add a cube for the grass so i'll just press s and scale these down and i want to scale it kind of down like this so it's flatter so i'll press s to scale and then click with my middle mouse wheel push it down on the x and then scale that down a little bit more okay tab into edit mode i'm going to press three to go to face select just select this face and i'll press one to go to front view actually three to go to side view on the number pad then i can press uh, g to grab and we still have the proportional editing on, so let's just click on this to turn it off. Okay, G to grab, click with your middle mouse, bring it up, and then R to rotate, just rotate that over. G to grab, bring it over, and then click on S to scale and just make it a little bit smaller. So we're basically just making one blade of grass and then we'll duplicate it and change it and make the clumps. So I'll press E to extrude now, S to scale, rotate that over, and then again, E to extrude, S to scale. So now we have just one blade of grass, Okay, so I want to make some more, so I'll press Shift D, click with my middle mouse, we'll bring this over. And this one I want to be different because I want because I want to have a bunch of different grass blades so that it looks more unique. So I'll tab into edit mode, Z to go into wireframe, press one to go to the vertex select, just press B to box select and select this. And then I can press R to rotate, G to grab. And I want the grass blade to be somewhat different so that it's more unique. So I might just box like this, rotate it over. Okay, that looks good. Now I'll press Shift D, click with my middle mouse, it'll bring it over, tab into edit mode, and three for side view. This one, I think I'll box select this and make it kind of high up. So just make it kind of higher up and straight. Okay, there we go. And then I'll press Shift D, click with my middle mouse, we'll bring this over. And this one, I'm gonna make a really small one that's kind of curving over. So I'll tab into edit mode, just select some areas. This far into the series, you hopefully have the basics of 3D modeling down because we have 3D modeled a lot of stuff. So hopefully this is pretty easy for you. And then I'm going to press Control R, click, and then just click again to place that. And why I'm doing that is because I wanna make it rotating over a little bit smoother. And then I'll press G to grab, bring that up, and then just box select the entire thing. S to scale, actually I wanna scale it up a little bit and then scale this down maybe just scale this up and rotate it over okay so now we have four blades of grass 
So that's pretty good. What I'm going to do is box select all of them in object mode, and then I want to join them together so that they're one object. So I'm going to press Control J with all of them selected, and now they're one object. So now what I can do is press L, and that'll select one of the grass blades with your mouse hovered over it. If you press L, that'll select all the linked vertices. And then I can press 7 to go to top view, and press G to grab. R to rotate, and basically what we're doing is we're just going to make a clump of grass. So I'm also double tapping R, and that'll go into the track bar all rotation, just rotating this around and making the grass clump. So now I'm going to deselect everything, press L with my mouse hovered over this one, G to grab. You can also scale it up, rotate it, double tap R to track ball it, and just make a little clump of grass, make all the grass kind of coming up at the same position. Bring this over, rotate it, and stick it into place. Okay, tab back into object mode, and we have our first piece. Now you can see that the origin point is right over here, and the origin point is where the center of the object is going to be. So you can see if I scale the object, or rotate it, or grab it, it's going to be like rotated on the origin. And when we add a particle system, the particles are going to come out where the origin point is. So if the origin point is way over here, or for instance, if the origin point is down there, and the the object is way up here, but its origin is way down here. Then when we add it into the particle system, it's going to look like these are floating. So we need the origin to be kind of right down here, right where we want the grass to come out. So I'll tab into edit mode, just select everything and press G to grab. Just uh, move it around so that the origin point is right down there. And the origin point, yeah, again, is that little orange dot that's on all the objects. So that's really important, especially for this, because we're going to be using this for a particle system. All right, so now that we've done that, I want to make four different pieces of grass. So two more that are a lot more bushy and a lot bigger, and then one more that's really small. So I'll press Shift D, click with my middle mouse wheel, bring this over. And this one, I want to be a really small. So I'll tap into edit mode and just choose one of these, like this one. Press L to select the linked vertices, and then you can press X and delete vertices. All right, so now that that is deleted, I'm just going to press L, select some random points and rotate them around just because I don't want this grass clump to look exactly the same, so I want to make it look a little bit different. Okay, just like that, so there is the second one. Let's select the bigger one, press Shift D, click with my middle mouse, we'll bring it over, and then I'll tab into edit mode, and just make sure everything is selected, and I'll go to top view by pressing 7 on the number pad, and then I can rotate it over, so I'm going to double tap R, just kind of rotate it so it's a bit angled, just slightly, and then I can press Shift D. That will duplicate everything that's selected, and then R and rotate it over, stick it in there, and then let's just do the same thing one more time. So double tap A to select everything, Shift D to duplicate, R to rotate, and then double tap R and just make it so it's angling a little bit out, just like that. Okay, there we go. So now we have another clump of grass, um, and then let's just Go into edit mode and you can just like manually play around with some stuff to make it a little bit more unique because some of these blades of grass you can kind of see that they look similar so really just play around with this you don't really have to do this it's not super important but it will probably make the final result look a little bit better so if you just want to manually play around with this like for instance these look the same so just box selecting some areas rotating them over because we're so far in the series, I'm assuming that you have the basics down at 3D modeling, so I'm not going to walk you through every little button that I'm pressing. It's pretty easy. You're just box selecting things and then rotating them, grabbing them, and scaling them. And make sure you're doing that in wireframe mode, because if you do that in solid mode and you box select something, it's only going to select the front side of it, so then it's not going to select the back side. All right, that is going to be good. I'm going to call that good. So now what I can do is do that one more time, and I'm going to make a even bigger clump of grass. So I'll press Shift D, click with middle mouse, bring that over, and then also the origin point here, I'm going to tab into edit mode and select everything, and press G and move this over, and then G and move this over, and just kind of stick it right in the center there. Okay, that looks pretty good, that one's good, that one's good. Okay, let's do this one. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, double tap A to select everything, and I'll press Shift D to duplicate. I think maybe I'll scale this one down a little bit, and then rotate it over and just kind of stick it on the side here. And then again, Shift D, double tap R, and then R, and just rotate that over. Okay, so now we have a big clump grass. Now I'm going to press L and just select a few of these that I don't really like and press X and delete them. And then again, just select some areas and change how they are so that they're a little bit more unique. You could even make some more pieces of grass, some unique pieces of grass if you wanted to. 
just play around with the shape of this and get it so that it looks good. I'm also just going to select a few pieces and delete them to thin that out a little bit. Okay, that's going to be good for my clumps of grass. So just make sure again that this origin point is in the center and just a little bit up. So now I need to add a material, so I'll just select this and then I'll go into render mode and click on new and I can call this like grass clumps. And then the base color here, I can just turn that to a green color and make it a little bit darker. And then I only have four pieces here, so I'll just click and drop the colors onto the other ones. And then if you remember in an earlier part, the bricks, we had them, we had each object have a random color. And I want to do the same thing for this grass. So let's go ahead and do that. So to edit that, I'm going to go to the shading tab and then zoom out here. And then what I want to do is press shift A here in the node editor. I'm going to click on the search and search for the object info node. Just drop that in there. And then the random, just like we did with the bricks, the random, I'm going to put the random into the base color. And then we need to tell it what colors to actually use because right now it's just using black and white. So I'll press shift A, search for a color ramp and just drop the color ramp right in there. And then just change these colors to the colors that you want. So this black one, I'll make that maybe a dark green. And then this one here, maybe make that like a light green, a little bit more yellow. Maybe make that a little bit darker. And then in the middle, you can click on the plus to add some more colors and just play around with the colors if you want some pieces of grass that are a little bit more yellow or a little bit more brown, things like that. So I'm just going to make two in here. So just click on the plus button right there and then you can drag these tabs around and then just change it to the colors that you want. And this is definitely not how you would make realistic grass. If you were making realistic grass, you wouldn't really give it a slow poly look. Uh, so this is definitely stylized grass. If you're making realistic grass, then there's a different way to make realistic grass. Okay, so you can see that now each blade of grass is a random color, and that's what I like. So I will press Control S to save this again, and then go back to the layout here. Okay, now just like the rocks, I need to put these in their own collection so that we can add them in a particle system. So I'm going to select these. Just select all of them and then press M again. So M and then click on new collection. And we want to call this grass, grass clumps. Okay. Click on okay. And then if you close this, you can see here's the grass clumps. Okay. Let's uncheck that so that it's out of the way. And then we can press alt H to unhide everything in the scene. Okay. So now we can actually add the grass onto our plane. So just select the plane. And then let's go over here and this is the particle tab. So here's the particles and each object can have particles. We're going to select the plane and then click on this plus here. And I'm going to call this rocks and then this one down here rocks. And that way, and that way we can just know that this is going to be the rock material. So there we go. Just name both of those rocks. Okay. Now if we turn it to emitter, if I click the play button, you can see it's going to be emitting these and I don't really want this because that's just going to, it kind of looks like snow or rain or something. If you're making snow or rain or something, then that would be what you want. But I don't want it to be raining rocks or grass. So what I'm going to do is change this to hair. So if I change this to hair, now there's going to be hair on the plane and it looks kind of like grass. But I want to tell it now not to just have hair coming up. I want to have the objects coming up instead. So let's uh, turn on advanced because that will help. And then let's scroll down here. If you click on the render tab, there are a bunch of tabs right here and a bunch of options, but don't worry, most of these options you're going to just leave at the default and I'll show you what to use. So, so just open up the render tab right here and right now it says render as path. So what that means is that it's rendering as these actual hairs. I want to change this to collection. Now, if you wanted it to just emit one object, you would choose object, but I want to choose collection because I want it to randomly have the different grass blades and the different rocks that we added. So just choose collection. And then right down here, there's the instance collection. You're going to click on this and then click on the rocks. And you can see that now it adds the rocks randomly around on the plane. So there's a few different settings here that we need to change. Let's scroll up here. The number, this is how many rocks you want there to be. I'm going to change this down to about 150. I'm going to change the number to 150. You can play around with this, of course, and then open up this source here. And right now this uh, distribution right now, it's set to jittered. I think that random is actually better for most things. So I'm going to change this to random. It just works a little bit better. 
Now let's scroll down here and I'm going to turn on the rotation and that way we can give it random rotation. And then if I zoom in here, you may have noticed that the rocks are all sideways. And this is kind of annoying with Blender's particle system. On default, it's kind of rotated over sideways, but I'll show you how to fix this. So let's turn on the rocks collection and then just find the rocks. Here they are. They're giant boulders. Let's just move them up. So what we need to do is we need to actually rotate these over. Even though they're straight right now, we need to rotate them over, and then that way the particle system will put them upright. It's kind of weird with Blender's particle system, but that's how you do it. So what I've found to work best for most objects is to press R to rotate, X on the X axis, and then type in negative 90 enter. So that way they're rotating this way. So now what we need to do is apply the rotation because right now this isn't the default rotation. Uh, Blender sees this as the default rotation, but I'm gonna press uh, shift control Z to redo that. So we need to tell Blender that this is the default rotation of these objects. And then that way the particle systems are gonna have the rocks pointed up. So to make this the default rotation, press control A and we're going to apply rotation. And now when you do that, this should work. Now, if it's the opposite way, if they are pointed down, then instead of rotating them on the X by negative 90, you're gonna to need to rotate them over 90 and then 90 again. So 180 and then apply the rotation. You could also try rotating them on the Y and X instead. So if these were over like this, you would rotate them on the X by 90 degrees or negative 90. And then once you're done with that, press control A and apply the rotation. Blender's particle system settings can be a little bit weird. And I don't really know why exactly this has to be like this, but that's just the best way that I found to do that. So select the objects, rotate them on the X by negative 90 degrees, and then control A and apply the rotation. And it works most of the time. And if for some reason it's still acting weird, you could play around with the orientation axis. Um, I found that this is a little bit weird as well and can be a little bit fiddly, but if you wanna change it to all of these and just try them out and see if it'll work, that may work. But hopefully rotating this like I did worked. So now what I can do is there's some different settings here. If I turn up the phase here, you can see that it's going to give it a random rotation and then also this random phase, you can turn this up too, and it's going to give it an even more random rotation. So I like to turn this all the way up to one and all the way up to two, and that way it'll give it random rotation. And it makes the rocks look different. And then right down here, if you scroll down here to the render, there's a scale and there's a scale random. So if I turn the scale up or down, it's going to change. And also I'm going to hold down the shift key as I uh, move that so that the movements are more sensitive. So just make it bigger or smaller. You can also go into the camera view and just kind of see what you want to do. And then also the random scale. If you turn this up, it's going to make some of the rocks smaller. So just turn this up to whatever you want. If you want some rocks to be bigger and some rocks to be smaller, and then you may need to turn the scale up a little bit to make all the rocks a little bit bigger. Okay, now you can see that there's barely any rocks around and a lot of the rocks are out here. We're actually going to tell Blender where we want the rocks to be because it's pointless to have the rocks out here because we're not even going to see this in the render. So how we do this is you select the plane and we are going to go from object mode to weight paint. Now, when we do this, we're going to be able to weight paint where the vertices are. So if I tab into edit mode, you can see there's only four vertices here. So we need to subdivide this plane so that there's a lot more geometry and then we can weight paint it. And wherever we paint, it's going to tell it that that's where the rocks are going to be. So I can tab into edit mode and select the entire plane. And then, and then I'm going to press the W key, but you can also right click if you are using left click select. I'm using right click select, so I hit W and this subdivide is gonna come up. So click on this and then right down here, you can see that it's subdivided it, so it's cut it. And the number of cuts, just turn this way up. I'm actually gonna turn this up to like a 30. You could even, if you wanted to, turn it up to like a 40. I'm just gonna turn this up to 50. You don't have to turn it up that high, but I'll turn this up to 50. Now from edit mode, you can just go back into object mode or whatever. I'm gonna go into weight paint. And then it looks really weird right now. I'm gonna press Z and move my mouse over to go into solid view. And now you can see that everything is blue. Now when you click and just drag around, you can see wherever the vertices are, it's going to start painting and it's gonna paint it red. So what it does is it starts with blue and blue is like the coldest and it's the smallest. And then it goes to light blue to green, to yellow, to orange, and then to red. Now, if you scroll up here and click on this top setting right here, here are the brushes for the weight paint. So right now it's set to draw. If you change it to add, it's gonna add, just like the draw brush. If you change it to subtract, that's going to get rid of it. So subtracting is gonna make it blue. And then if you click on add, that's going to add. And so basically wherever it's red, 
that's where the rocks are going to be. And then wherever it's blue, there's not going to be any rocks. And then right in between, there will be a little bit of rocks. You can also change the strength here. So you can drag this down if you want to turn the strength down of your brush. And that way your brush will be less strong. And then also there's the radius here. Uh, you can make the radius bigger or smaller. So I'm going to go into the camera view. And then to make your brush smaller, you can press F and that'll make your brush smaller and F and that'll make your brush bigger. That's the shortcut key. And then also shift F will change the strength. So you can just drag these values, but shift F and then click shift F and click. That'll change the strength and then F that'll change the size of your brush. So what I'm going to do now is in the camera view, I'm going to click and just kind of make a pathway where I want the rocks to be just like that. And then just to show you, just to have a visual representation, I'm going to go down here to the particle settings, go down here all the way to the bottom. And you can see that right here, there's the vertex group. So open this up. And then if you scroll down here, you can see there's the density, click on this and then click on the group. And now you can see wherever you paint, the rocks are going to be. So now that I've painted that line right there, I know where I want the rocks to be. So I can just paint around, click and drag, paint wherever you want the rocks to be. Oh, what happened here? I went into a different mode. Let's go back to the layout, wait, paint. And I'm just going to start off by painting and making this entire thing red. So turn the strength up, make it all red, right just where the camera is, because we don't really need it to be anywhere else. Okay. And you can see that now the rocks are being distributed just where we want them. Okay, that looks good, but I don't want there to be any rocks on the road. So if I don't want to be rocks on the road, what I can do is click on this and then on the add, I want to change this. So click on this, change it to uh, subtract. And now if you draw where the road is, that's going to get rid of the rocks on the road. Now you can see it's pretty hard to control it. And that's because we need to subdivide this down even more. So what you can do is you can go back into object mode, tab, go into edit mode, and then press uh, the W key or right click and then click on subdivide again. That'll add even more detail and hopefully your computer can handle this. Um, and then what you do is go back into weight paint and then you get the subtract press and keep going. And that way it's going to be a little bit better to control that. It'll be a little bit easier. Also, you might want to go along here and make the, and make the edge of the road just a little bit blue basically just keep on painting until the rocks are where you like. So if you press zero on the number pad, now you can see in the camera view. Now you may have painted this how you want, but the rocks may still not be where you want. So there's a few things that we can do. Let's click back into object mode. Now, if you click down here to the particle settings, you can see that there is a seed value right here. So if you change this seed up, basically what it's going to do is it's going to randomly generate the rocks again and again. So just keep on changing this and you can change where the rocks are going to be. So I like something like that because I like that some of the rocks are over there. Also, if you want to change the number up, you can turn that up and that'll add more rocks. So I think I'll add a few more rocks and then maybe I'll add like uh, 200. And then if you go down here again, you can change the scale. So maybe I want the rocks to be smaller. I'll make that smaller. You can go into rendered mode and just see how that's looking. That's looking pretty good. I think I will make the number a little bit less though, maybe 170. So just play around with that until it's how you like. All right, now we've already done the hard work, like the painting and modeling and stuff. So to add the grass, it's going to be a lot quicker. So just click right here, click on the plane, click the plus right here to add a new particle system. And I'm going to call this one grass and then down here grass, just so that we don't get these mixed up at all. So now we have the grass one. We're going to do pretty much the same thing. So click on the hair, click on advanced. The number I'm going to make this maybe around 300 or something. Scroll down here, the distribution. I think that random looks a bit better than jittered. So I'm going to change that to random. Keep going down. I'm going to turn on the rotations so that we can give it a random rotation and I'll turn the phase to one and the random phase to two. And then we'll keep going down. Now, instead of render as path, I want it to be rendered again as collection. So just click on that and then go down here. And then the instance collection, click on this and we're going to click on the grass clumps. So again, you can see that the grass clumps are rotated over. So we need to hide the rocks and then turn on the grass clumps, the grass clump clumps collection. And here are all the grass clumps. I'm going to shift select the grass clumps, just bring them up. And then what I want to do is the same thing. So R to rotate X on the X axis, type in negative 90 and enter. Now it's okay that the grass clumps are going up and down like this because each object is rotated over the rocks were just this way instead of this way. So that's totally fine. I'll just press G and bring this up there so that they're out of the way. And yeah, the scale doesn't really matter because we'll change the scale with the particle system. Okay. And then one more really important thing, you need to press control a 
and applied the rotations so that that way the grass has that as the default rotation and now hopefully the grass will be upright that's the best way that i found for it to work so then you can just play around with these so like the number if you want to make more grass or less grass uh, also the scale again play around with the scale you can hold down the shift key to make more sensitive movements random scale i'm going to turn this up so that uh, some of the grass is smaller and then you can go into rendered mode and just see how that's looking now again you can see that the grass is randomly right over here but we don't have to re-weight paint we can actually use the same weight paint that we already painted so it's just the same way you just scroll down here the density on the vertex group we want to put it in the density because the density means where it's going to be there's all these ones here but we're going to use the density so click on this click on group now if for some reason it's the opposite for you what you can do is you can actually click on this button and that'll flip it and that way the grass will be wherever we painted it blue instead of where we painted it red so i'm just going to click on this because that's what i want okay so there we go go into rendered mode you can just see how that's looking okay that's looking really cool i do want to make the grass smaller though i'm going to press z and move my mouse down to go to the material preview just to see this a little bit better so i'll make the grass a little bit smaller and then up here on the number i think i'll turn this up a bit so there's more grass and then the seed i think i'll turn this up so that uh i want there to be some grass right here on the front just find something that looks good and then if you wanted to you could select the plane and go back to weight painting and just play around with the weight painting so i think i'll just kind of paint around here to try to get those rocks off you kind of have to play around with it fiddle around with it it's a little bit fiddly but just keep on playing with that until the rocks go off of there you can see every time I change it, the rocks kind of randomly change. So it is a little bit fiddly, but just play around with it until it's how you like. Okay, that is good. I'm going to call that good. So I'm going to go back to object mode now, and I'll go into rendered mode just to see how that's looking. If you wanted to, you could press F12 to render that out. And you may have noticed that my screencast software sometimes lags. That's because my GPU is rendering this whole thing. So it lags up the view a little bit. So there we go. If I just go into the material preview, there we go. There is our scene. It's really coming together. We have grass, rocks, we have our house, our trees, really looking nice. So there's only two parts left. In the next part, we're going to be doing cloth simulations. So I'm gonna introduce you to basic cloth simulations and we're gonna make this flag blowing in the breeze. And then the last part, we're going to be doing basic animation and rendering. And we're going to render this together to the final render and also do the final animation with the camera zooming in and make it look really nice. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've been enjoying this series so far and you can click right up on the screen when it comes out, when the next part comes out and I will see you there. Thank you for watching and I I will see you in the next part.